Joseph Parker has not had a career-defining fight. So my challenge to my fighter, Joseph Parker, is I need this to be his greatest performance. And if he can show the public and, he, and show Anthony Joshua what I see in the gym when he's at his best, he's a very, very hard guy to beat. This is my time. I think it's my destiny to be here. I feel I have better speed. I feel I have better movement. I think it's time for me to actually show what I can do in the ring. In most countries in the world, um, it's customary in sport to analyse the strengths and the weaknesses of the opponent. It came as a bit of a surprise when we started pointing out what we see as chinks in Anthony Joshua's armour. And there seemed to be a shock that we dare speak about these things. They weren't personal, it wasn't trash talk. Joseph, probably a bit quicker on hand speed, definitely got a better chin, and I would add mentally tougher. When you want to talk about facts, the three times that I have been hurt or dropped was in the European Championships, the second time, was with David Price, and then with Klitschko. And you know all them times what it taught me? It would take more than a human to stop me from where I'm destined to be. You can't say what you've been saying, and then when you're five feet away from him, you can't let your bum, your bum deceive you. Eddie, what are they even saying? You, I just said what No, no, you said he what might, you said uh, he might have some mental weaknesses. You said he has mental weaknesses. You said he is mentally weak. He weak. is mentally you, weaker than Joseph uh, Parker. You said he's mentally weak. Okay. You don't Anthony do... Joshua listen, is you, mentally weak. You don't do Parker. what he is doing and be mentally weak. You also said he has a glass chin. We're going to break his glass chin. Don't tell me. Tell him he's here. OK, so... <laughs> on, hey, OK, so, look, I'll, I'll give you a small concession. He's mentally tougher than most people, but he's mentally weaker than Joseph Parker. The team Parker truly believe they're going to win the fight. Not someone might get knocked out. Do yeah, you, do you honestly, truly believe? I believe it's the destiny of Joseph Parker to win the fight and make history. The answer is no. This is what really excites me and it really excites Joseph Parker. Now you find out how good you really are. And Joseph Parker is a uh, historian. He knows that this is about his place in history and he will give every single piece of sweat and every ounce of blood in his body to be the best he possibly can. I'm looking forward to leaving here tomorrow, back to Vegas to start a hard training camp with my coach, Kevin Barry. Joshua, I've watched him for a long time. I know his weaknesses and he thinks he knows my weaknesses. Can't wait to train hard, can't wait to be back, to put on a great performance, hopefully catch him on the gym and knock him out. I was born in New Zealand. I am New Zealand Samoan. How was I introduced to boxing? My father's name is Dempsey, so he was named after Jack Dempsey. He loved the sport, had a passion for it. When myself and my brother were born, he introduced us probably at the age of three or four, introducing us to tapes of Mike Tyson and Lewis Roy Jones Jr. And I think that's where it all began. Now that I've ticked off being New Zealand champion and world champion, the person in my way at the moment is Anthony Joshua. My goal is to be unified champion. I have to beat him. What would you like it on, Mr. Parker? Ah, oh, whatever. It's nice and warm here. Like we're in Samoa. <laughs> no, Kevin achieved a lot in the boxing world going to the Olympics, representing New Zealand, getting a silver medal, fighting Evander Holyfield, then taking David Tua to a world title fight. When I moved to Vegas and, and joined up with Kevin, man, I'll tell you that I just learned so much. Like, I'm still learning now. As soon as I met Kevin, we started talking, we started bonding, we started getting to know each other. That's where it all started clicking, you know. <laughs> yeah. Kevin and I bonded over training. We, we talked uh, from home to the gym, gym to home. I was like a sponge, like I was absorbing everything. I didn't even know how the boxing world, like how it was run, everything involved. But when I met up with Kevin, he gave me a good lesson on how uh, everything was. This gym's awesome. It's probably the, the highlight of my, of my camp, this camp, having the gym here. We saved about two hours of traveling a day from where we were. And um, it was always our goal to try to get something a little closer to the home. And this, the way this worked out, 
you know, we're here in about three minutes. So it really couldn't be better. And for a fight of this size, you know, it's just great for us that uh, we're not wasting two hours when we've got so much on. It means we can spend more time sleeping and resting and recovering. Work hard and then get that recovery. Well, I've been involved in boxing most of my life. I had my first fight when I was eight years old. My father was a boxing coach. And at that particular stage of my life, you, you sort of get uh, directed by your parents. I ended up fighting for 16 years, won a number of tournaments around the world, and was selected by my country to go to the Olympic Games. And after I won my first three fights there, I, was, I had secured New Zealand's first boxing medal for 56 years, which uh, was something that my father was, was very proud of and something at the time I was very proud of. Well, my dad uh, was always a really big part of my life. My dad was the Olympic and Commonwealth coach for New Zealand and uh, was my best mate. He died seven years ago and uh, he's with me every day and uh, he would have loved this journey with Joe. And he's in the gym with me and this is one of my favourite photos of him with the gloves around his neck. And there's a shot of him and I at the uh, Olympics in uh, 1984. Even now that he's been gone seven years, he's a, still a very big part of my life. I got in, involved in, in coaching straight after the Olympics. It was the sport that I loved, it was my passion. And, you know, I, I, was, I thought I was very fortunate to be able to make a living uh, following my passion. Five operations here, plate in, plate out, another plate put in, the wrist is fused, it doesn't bend. Broke it on a, um, on a heavyweight called Omra Nawadi's head about, got 10 years ago, sparring him. Hit him on the forehead, snapped the wrist. So I've got a few battle wounds through my coaching career. Joe gave me a hernia with a body shot about 18 months ago. Um, as you'll see today when he hits me to the body. Ah, you're very, hey, that's evil, man. There's no love in that, that's evil. <laughs> Music for us is very important. Just to, um, it helps relax us, we have a bit of fun and feel that rhythm, you know, dance while we're doing everything. It's good, but some people, I know some people don't like music, but we like music. That's what I want. My Vegas lifestyle is a dream. All you're doing is boxing and working hard, eating and sleeping. The opportunity that I have to train in Vegas and to live my dream is absolutely awesome. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that want to live the same dream. Big rewards come with big risks. We've got to move the head in the right place and let it go. So the first trip to Vegas, you know, I, I remember it clearly, you know, we we're driving to the airport and we had all the family come to the airport to say goodbye because it's the first trip away. I think my mom cried. And then as soon as we arrived, we got to the house and Kev showed me my room. And Tanya was there to welcome us. It's like as soon as I left my family, I came into this family environment where they were just open arms, you know, to welcome me. And it was, that was, that, that made things much easier. We're just sitting down having a bit of lunch. We just got home from training. Joe's just finished his boxing workout for the day. And today, because we've got some guests with us, he thought rather than running off to cryotherapy, he'd come home, have lunch, have a little nap, and get ready for the rest of his day. Isn't that right, Mr. Parker? Sir, yes, sir. The hardest part about leaving New Zealand and, and coming to Vegas was because I was close with my family. And I'm really, you know, I, I do everything with my family. And so that was probably the hardest part. And because I was comfortable at home and I didn't know anything else about you know, having a proper training structure and eating clean. But then once I came here, it's like they, they sort of walked me into the house and, and treated me like part of the family. So it was, that made it easier to adjust. Being in a family environment is good. Plus you get good meals cooked every day. 
Tyler makes nice meals, mixes it up. I never used to like beetroot, but now I do. I like it. As you can see, I've got heaps on my plate. <laughs> you know, it didn't take very long for Joe to um, amalgamate into our family very well. Maybe a couple of weeks, and he was comfortable, we were comfortable. He gets on very well with our sons and daughter, and, and with Kevin, obviously. And uh, he's just like another son. I think she's uh, amazing. Um, she's obviously like my mother and very loving. I think I'm the favourite son. You know, she's very loving, looks after us very well. You know, he's in the family now, you know, and we, you know, parents treat him like, like a son, he's a brother to me, so it's good. To be honest, I don't know, I was a bit upset when he first came, he took my, my bedroom. But <laughs> Professional boxing at this level is really tough and really demanding and you have to put a lot of hard yards in and if it's just grind and grind and grind every day, it's just too hard. It's too hard when you go into an 8 or 10 week camp. We have so much fun and we have a lot of laughter and um, you know, even today in the gym you can see that we're doing pads and we're working on combinations but you know, the, we're always kidding each other. You know, we keep things, we keep things fun, we keep it relaxed, because that's what works. And it works for Joe and it works for my coaching style. This is my little crib. This is my space. Um, you know, go to the gym, training, come back, have lunch, have dinner, and then I just come here, relax. I've got my iPad, my phone, Netflix, chill by myself. <laughs> you know, I've obviously got some inspiration up here. You know, there's a uh, Holyfield, a signed glove, and then there's uh, Ahmed Ali, Joe Fraser. Picture of me and Kev, and this uh, environment is like a jungle. Uh, as you can see, <laughs> so it's just nice. It's nice. I have my own space, have my own bathroom, and all that. So when I'm in here, it's just time to relax and chill. You now you have a good nap, prepare for the next session, or just video call home and talk to the family. So it's a good time just to you know my own personal space. How often do you try and speak to the little one? Every day. Every day. It's a uh, it's a highlight. You know, you train for the, the whole day, and then you come at night time. You call home puts a smile on your face and it's uh, something I look forward to. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's hard being away and not being there while they're growing, but um, sacrifices, sacrifices to give them a better future. When I moved here and I was welcomed with open arms and had a family environment to live in, it made training way easier. And what they say, when you're a happy fighter, you're a dangerous fighter. And I believe I'm dangerous. So I'm happy, <laughs> so I'm dangerous. <laughs> We train like, most days three times a day, pretty much six days a week. We run in the morning, have a nap. We wake up, we come to the gym and we train for about two hours and rest again, and then get up again and do you know, conditioning in the evening. And it's pretty full on, and the body feels a lot of pain, but you learn to enjoy it. The reason why I'm confident is because I work hard. Like I said before, when I put every single ounce of energy into the gym and prepare as best I can, I'm confident. It is hard to get up in the morning. You know, when you're in bed, it's nice and comfortable, nice and warm, but there's this many mornings when I wake up and I go, again, you know, do I have to get up? But then I want something so bad, so it is, it's, a, it's a showing the discipline that you have. There's other things that uh, we do to complement what we're, we're trying to achieve in camp, and there's physio, there's the neuromuscular work, which is Probably one of the most painful massages I've ever had in my life. And it makes you like shake and sometimes scream. <laughs> but it's, it's painful, but it's good. Well, right now we're doing some, just some deep soft tissue work, freeing up the elbow and the forearm, 
Um, and then when we're done with this, we usually do dry needling with him. Again, to try to release that and you know maintain his motion and keep the muscles nice and loose. You know, Tim's really helped Joe a lot. You know, with the workload that's placed on his shoulders and his arms and elbows, it's very important that we release that and we keep tuning it all the time so we can perform at his best day in, day out in the gym. I don't think there'd be a professional athlete in the world who's training at his full potential who doesn't have some form of a niggle. So, you know, when you realise that, you know that you just have to work through it. You know, we, have, we do a lot of massage, we do neuromuscular work, we do yoga, we do the dry needling with Tim, so we do a lot of things to keep Joe's body performing at its best. The needles are the best. I love needles. What better day than to get stuck with needles today? <laughs> I don't like needles. <laughs> it's surprising how a little needle can make you go, oh, oh. When you hit those trigger points, you can get a real good jump. Yeah, you can see a good twitch there. And, you know, with him, again, the workload and the, as much work as they put in, it's pretty easy to find a bunch of the spots where you can get him to jump pretty well. Joe's very receptive to trying new things, and he's also very much in tune with his body. And if he can feel the results, he's going to adopt it as part of his training. You have to take care of your body. You know, as an elite professional athlete, you can't just grind, 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 day after day after day. Something's going to give. All these things are very, very important to maintaining Joe's body to keep it at uh, pristine condition and you know, to, to enable him to get the full benefits of his workout. I don't have to talk a lot when Kev's around. I, you can know, ask me a question, you get to the simple answer. I ask Kevin a question, you get the full detail of the whole thing. <laughs> Every single bit of detail you'll get. I'm a detailed guy. Well, no, there's it's nothing wrong with it. It's good. about it's, taking it's, care of detail. Yeah. And, and, and hey, in a big fight like this, it's not just detail, it's the small detail. See, I'm learning it's taking about care all of the small detail, detail yeah. is the difference between winning and losing. Exactly. What Kev said, times three. <laughs> <laughs> a very good old mate of mine was a great warrior, fought many battles, hard battles, was never afraid to crack people over the head with this, was never afraid to defend himself with this uh, precious shield here. His fighting days are over. We were like mine. Fighting days are over now. I'll leave all the fighting up to Joseph Parker. I got approached by somebody who was down on their luck one day and I was just walking out of a store and I said, what do you want for it? And it was something like, and they said, oh, $20. And I said, I'll give you $50. So I gave them 50 bucks, threw it in the car, it was all rusted, brought it home and I thought this would be a great project for Tanya's dad, who we were always trying to find him things to paint and repair. So he said, to, he said about, uh, he was born in uh, he was born in Canterbury, in the UK, and he so he said he said about painting this for us, and uh, he, you know he passed uh, a couple of years ago, and every every morning when I see this, it reminds me of Daryl Cliff. Signing posters for supporters and and fans, and also gloves. I think each fight we have a lot of gloves that we sign. There's a lot of charities that reach out that uh, need help and assistance. It's the reason why Kev got all these gloves, to give back to everyone. So it's, it is important now that we're in this position to give back and to feel like we're helping else, you know, elsewhere. Joe knows that he's in a great position where you can influence the life of a young person. You know, this the power comes from within is like you are in control of yourself. It is from within you. You believe in yourself, you can be anyone and anything in this world. So it's a very, very strong message. And, um, and, and I know a lot of people have approached us over the last five years and said that they, they love that tag and it means a lot to them. So, you know, when you're having that sort of influence and effect on someone's life, uh, it's, a, it's a great position to be in and something that we take seriously. Joshua has earned his place at the top of the heavyweight division. That being said, I think Parker has the ingredients to beat him. I think Parker, because he has such a good chin and because he fires so many punches, I think he has the ability to wear Joshua down. And unlike Klitschko, 
once he wears him down to take advantage of that and to win the fight going away. I know Joshua is a very, very big banger, but Joseph, I think, has the ability to absorb any kind of punch that Joshua hits him with. I think it's a very competitive fight, but if I had to bet the fight, I would bet on Parker. This is what we came for, and we couldn't want it anymore. We could never turn back now, got to leave it all on the floor. Anthony Joshua, I think, I have the skills to outbox him. I can knock him out. Got to land the right punch at the right time. Fighting tooth, thin nail on the way up. Tell them the truth, but they think it's just made up. I remember sitting in the car with them one day, and I go, I'm telling you now, in two years' time, we will all be working for you. You will be the leader of this team. Joseph Parker has been the leader of this team for some time now. Go for it. We're fighting in his backyard. Also, we're fighting another champion who's undefeated, who really wants it bad. A lot of people say it's going to be overwhelming, we're going to be nervous and scared, but I see it differently. I see it as that we're going to make the most of the occasion. <laughs> Everything we've done in the last five years has prepared us for this huge stage, and it won't matter if there's 800, 8,000 or 80,000 people at this fight. It'll be the same Joseph Parker that walks to the ring. He has waited a long time to test himself against the so-called best fighter in the world. This is a big stage to put on the best performance of my life. Joseph Parker has far better skills than Anthony Joshua. And if the best Joseph Parker turns up, we will leave the ring with all the belts. Boxing at the moment is my life. I'm thankful that my dad introduced me to boxing. My plan is to be victorious, and my plan is to take those belts back to New Zealand and Samoa. Sky Sports, feel it all.